Hey, how's everyone doing today? Are you having a good week? Are you ready for the weekend? I'm definitely ready for the weekend, but uh, my weekend is going to be filled with a lot of managerial tasks and and family time, hopefully. I'm really looking forward to that second part. So, okay. Uh, a lot of the time, you're going to set goals and you're going to you're going to have these different things you want to accomplish and you're not going to be able to get them all done. Uh, especially if you're more creative or ambitious, you're, you're going to have 12 things you want to accomplish in a year and uh, impatience and frustration comes about when you can only actually accomplish five of those things. Now, the hustle culture is going to tell you like, oh man, you're making excuses, uh, you're not getting it done, you got to, you got to like completely recalibrate your whole life get all 12 finished that's not that's not how life works life uh throws curveballs let's put it that way uh let's start somewhere else for just a second when life gets harder it means that you've graduated to the next level okay you gotta think of it like video games you're gonna get into your groove you're gonna understand how your life works and you're gonna start to master it you're going to really understand every day what needs to get done, how to do it, and you're going to feel good about yourself because with that built-up confidence, you're, you're making it through each day where 99% of everything you wanted to get done got done and you're doing it well and I've, I've really mastered this. Well, things are now easy for you, okay? You're, you're level 30 in a level 10 zone. <laughs> And, and so when life gets harder, uh, you have to realize you've, you've moved into that level 30 zone <laughs> and now all the mobs hit harder and everything is, is much more difficult for the same amount of effort. You're not making as much progress. That just means you've gone up and in, into the next level. Okay. So that, that video game analogy works really well in, in life. Um, so starting there. Now you understand where I'm at. <laughs> Life is upgraded. Oh man, I'm in the, the leveled up zone and it's a little more difficult to make the same amount of progress with the same amount of effort. And like I said earlier, with curveballs, uh, life throws them all the time. So I'm not only trying to master a new cycle of, of habit, uh, but a car broke down and you got sick or the kids are sick or something. There's the curveball. So <laughs> uh, not only is routine thrown out the window and you have to relearn a routine because you're on the next level of life. You have to, you have to relearn how to do basic stuff so that you can fit in the extra stuff to accomplish those 12 things of which you'll accomplish five. Uh, uh, okay. But also, there's going to be these curveballs that you now have to sit down and focus on and sort out before you can get back to those 12 goals. So not only are things more difficult to accomplish, but you now have other things on your plate that require your attention. They have a higher priority. <laughs> so to get more, more literal, more tangible, let's, let's get out of the weeds of, of metaphors. Um, I'm upgrading skills so that I can get a better job. Awesome. That's one thing. I'm trying to be a great dad. I want to be a great husband. Okay. Those are two other things. Um, what else? Fitness goals. You know, you should work out every week. You should, you should do that probably two or three times. It's really good for your body. Okay. That's another goal. Uh, you want a clean house. You don't, you don't want your house to be messy. You're going to get sick more often and it's hard to find things and it's just... So you gotta, you gotta maintain a certain standard of living. You know, live in a certain level of, of cleanliness and hygiene. That's important as well. Okay, and, and you can go down the list, add six more things, get to 12. What's that, six? Doesn't matter, right? Maybe another goal of yours is, is not just fitness related, but fitness adjacent. You know, you're gonna lose a few pounds or you're gonna eat better, okay? That's kind of its own thing as well. It, it pretty much is because the kitchen and the gym are separated. So there you go. Um, so while you're working on all those, uh, how do you work on those, first of all? Well, you have to allocate time for them. You have to plan out your week. 
on Tuesday, I'm going to be working on the uh, career upgrades, you know, skill building, two hours set aside to study and, and code in my little home lab. Great, great, great. Um, so you're going to do that like once a week? Is that multiple times per week? When are date nights for you and the wife? When do you fit in family time? Is it every day? Uh, maybe if I'm if I'm going into the office, I come home. Is that family time every day? Is it specific days? You have to allocate time for each of the goals. Okay. And then when schedules change, that could be a great uh, a great time for life to send you to that higher leveled area. Right? <laughs> when schedules change, then suddenly life can get a little more difficult to fit in time for all those goals. And then you get curveballs that just derail everything because you're not actually going to sit down and work on all the stuff. You're working on the curveballs, solving them. And so all that to say, uh, you know, six minutes of your time there. Thank you for your patience. That's where I've been. That's what I've been doing is handling curveballs left and right. And it's, it's really frustrating because <laughs> First, schedules changed a little bit. Life got a little more difficult. Okay, how do we change around schedules? So we're still meeting every objective to, to complete those things that I mentioned. Okay, so now you're learning new habits and new routines. You got to have discipline to do that. And then the car breaks down. And so now you have to make a new schedule because there's only one car and you have been living with two for quite a while. And then what do you do with the car? So there's there's this whole realm of chores related to fixing the car, selling the car, organizing registration is coming up in the next month. How does all that get handled? And by the time you're done with work and the family time and cleaning the house, you can't leave dirty dishes. You just can't. You've got kids, right? So... The cleaning of the house takes very high priority, <laughs> whether you want to or not. And I want to, but it takes very high priority. So you've taken care of those three things. You have personal needs. I mean, God forbid you have to use the bathroom, right? <laughs> Stop drinking water. You'll never have to use the bathroom. That clears up a lot of time. Uh, you get through with all that. And when's the last time you and your wife sat down and went out to dinner? Or, I don't know, like talked about what you're reading or... Or how you want to raise the kids. or So that's that's going to take precedence over the study time. That's going to take precedence over fitness. Because if you keep pushing that back and pushing that back, eventually you're going to have an argument. And then there's another curveball as you and your wife aren't on the same page. And Okay, all right. So all that considered, it's now 9 p.m. <laughs> and now you got to sit down and figure out how do you... Repair the certain car issues. How do you sell a car in this regard? How do you, Can you get it done in the next 15 days before registration? I think that's very possible. And on top of all of it, you're not working out. You're not doing that study time. And so there's going to be not only... Okay, wait, wait, wait. so there's going to be frustration because you're not chasing those goals, right? You're not making any progress on those goals. And upgrading your career... <laughs> is super important because it, uh, I mean, get to the bottom line, more money, really. More engagement, it's more challenging, it, it helps your mind, but uh, more money. So when your car breaks, it's not a world-ending situation, it's just, hey, something we got to deal with and we have the funds to handle it, okay? So there's a lot of frustration around not doing that study time <laughs> because it's it's the answer to all the problems on the table right now. Fair, fair. Um, and then if you're not working out, you're not dealing with your stress in in a way. Like for me, working out helps me relieve stress. It helps me work through problems. It helps me think about things differently. Uh, it all around is, is medicine for my body and mind. And you're not doing that. So stress is going to be building. And you're not relieving that with accomplishments in the study time or in the gym. You're not relieving that with a long session of cardio or some new weightlifting uh, PR, something like that. So it becomes a downward spiral if you're not fast enough to deal with the curveballs. It's a downward spiral if you're not quick enough to level up, <laughs> to go back to the video game metaphor, so that you can handle the new difficult environment. And you'll get trapped in that negative spiral and it feeds on itself. I feel that in myself very strongly right now. 
and I'm I'm really struggling to do anything. <laughs> Like family time, date time, study time, fitness, uh, any of it. Because I'm just overwhelmed with what's on the plate. It's very fascinating. It's very interesting to sit here in this downward spiral and you're like, okay, today I'm going to get XYZ done. And you know that taking little steps along the way is going to help. You're going to sit down. You're going to get 30 minutes of work in. On, on the car selling thing, on some study time, you're going to get 30 minutes, you're going to be able to go for a run, there's going to be something. And those little bits of work are what's going to pull you out of these issues. But, uh, but man, sometimes you're going to wake up and just be overwhelmed, be frustrated, be scared. <laughs> be scared? How do you handle this new, more difficult environment? How do you... How do you deal with that stress when the things you do for stress relief aren't there and you're not doing them? Uh, how do you juggle the dozen things and then the curveballs on top of it? It's really hard. I've, I've been having really bad dreams, like real bad dreams. I wake up and my calves are very sore. I've been, I've been running in my sleep. Sometimes I wake up because I'm having a muscle cramp because I'm just tightening my legs so tight. And like all day today, I've been limping. Just because my left calf is just, it's beat up. I slept and got a workout. Is that, is that what happened? Uh, what the heck is this? So, definitely will need to modify my life habits <laughs> going into this next week. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's going to wear you down. And you're going to need to solve these problems as quickly as possible. Because there's a deadline registered in the car, and are you, are you going to sell the broken car or donate it or what <laughs> before the registration happens? Uh, that's a that's a big thing. And and think about the uh, how do you describe that? Like a, the self destruction involved in this whole process that you're describing right now. You're you're slowly imploding <laughs> due to the the levels of stress and the the lack of stress management that you're allowing yourself to have. Oh man, this could go really badly if you don't get your act together. <laughs> Solve the little curveballs, figure out a routine in the level 30 zone. <laughs> you can do it. Take a deep breath. <laughs> and then learning to manage your energy too. So by the time it gets to 9 p.m. and you have that free time and now you can sit down and do all these things that you need to do and that you want to do, you have to learn how to manage your energy so that by the time you get to 9 p.m., you're not ready for bed, which is very common. After you after you play with a two-year-old and a one-year-old and you've done all the, the husbandly chores, you know, you're with the house and hanging out with your wife. And it's, it's not a chore hanging out with your wife, okay? Always remember that. But it's going to feel like that when there's a dozen things that need to be done. And I... I love you, honey, but I don't want to hear about the random thing right now. I gotta do the thing. <laughs> I'm sure it's a very common sentiment among among husbands and boyfriends all around. <laughs> uh, and especially as stress mounts, you're you're not gonna give the attention that they deserve to them. <laughs> so, whoo, take a deep breath. Don't give up hope. Everything will be fine. Sometimes there's just rough patches. The way I described it to my wife the other day, uh, it's like walking through a field of bad luck and you're just stepping on a bunch of thistles. You know, you. It is what it is. Take a deep breath. And you can do this. <laughs> None of these things are insurmountable, is, is what you have to remember. It feels really overwhelming at the time, but what do you need to do? Work out? Easy. You need to learn some new skills? That's... It's easy. You just spend enough time with it. You'll be fine. What do you need to do? Set date nights? Stick to it? You know, plan those out? Okay. Be present with your kids so you can be a good father? That's probably the easiest one on the list. They're they're awesome. Every, every day I see them, I can be in the crappiest mood. They always pick me up. I, I adore my children. They're the most delightful people I know. And... Car thing's easy. Selling a car is easy. 
figuring out how to register a car, how what to do with it. What, what do we do for the next vehicle? Do we want a next vehicle? We'll find out this next week. That's easy. None of these things are insurmountable. None of them are really that hard, okay? We got running water. <laughs> That's a huge blessing. We have electricity. We have clothes. We have food in the fridge. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. You all seen Reservoir Dogs? You know that scene where he's in the back of the car, he's been shot in the belly, and and the, the driver is telling him, you're all going to be okay. You know, he keeps repeating that, and he tells him, you say it, say the words, and the guy in the back is like, hey, I'm going to be okay. Yeah. It's exactly what you got to do to yourself. <laughs> just, just in a sing-song voice, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Y'all have a good weekend. Thanks for listening to my self-pep talk. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye.